Hey, this is Jacob Young, actor, producer. Uh, I've been on Bold and the Beautiful, General Hospital, All My Children, 20 Years in Soaps, and uh, loving the producing life. You're listening to Anthony Rogers. Republican Anthony Rogers has no previous political experience. Rogers, a comedian, is well known for a podcast called The Anthony Rogers Show. Hey man, this is Tommy Chong, and right now you're listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol Baskin, and you are listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Hey y'all, this is Kevin from Candlebox, you are listening to the funny man Anthony Rogers. Hey, my name is Alex Zulkin, writer of TED and Family Guy, and you're listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Lucky you. Hey, this episode is sponsored by Bedlam Beard. It's a small batch, handcrafted, disabled, veteran-owned beard care products, oils, bombs, and washes. Butter's coming soon. Products for the bearded man that won't hurt his wallet. Get your Bedlam on. No. Go to the link in the description. It's made in America. Get you some to get your beard like this. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. Um, today we have an absolute legend. Uh, he makes me look like a four. So we have uh, <laughs> we have uh, <laughs> Jacob Young from uh, Girl Next Door. Uh, the Bold and the Beautiful, probably the biggest thing. And then um, a couple of their awesome movies like Walking Dead TV show, stuff like that. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on the show. No problem, man. I don't think people realize how big the Bold and the Beautiful is. I, like that is like 30 million viewers or something crazy like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, and it's in 113 countries, but when I was on it initially in 97, those numbers were way more than that. Um, I bet. But, no, I bet. But, but uh, internationally that show has just excelled. It's uh, it got on the same, um, you know, what made it so popular. They were on the same distribution company, King world, which was Baywatch. That makes sense. I could see that. It was crazy. I was looking at the numbers. I'm like, you got to have crazy numbers. You're you're nominated for like seven Emmys or something. Yeah, yeah. I, That's well, insane. 20, Twenty years in the in the in the prison. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, been, it's been great though. No, it's been a great ride. Honestly, I, I can't uh, I can't complain at all. That's crazy. My, my my favorite role of yours was Girl Next Door. I loved that movie as a kid. Like I was like uh, I was like a high school age when I came out. You're about ten years older than me, probably. So I, I think like uh, yeah, I was probably like high school age when I came out. I absolutely loved that movie, and your role was good, man. That was, that was a classic movie, man. Yeah. No thanks. Um, I actually showed that to my son, who's who's uh, he's just now a teenager. I was like, maybe it's a little too early after I started watching it again, but uh, but he was like, wow. For them, you know, for my kids, it's. It's not about, you know, the soaps and things that I've been on and TV, but like when he, when he really connects with something that's like culture driven, yeah, um, it, it became so much more real to him. He was like, oh, that was, you are a real actor, dad. <laughs> what do you think I've been doing? How that's, do I pay your bills? <laughs> dude, that's so funny. Yeah. I, like it, it's definitely a different movie after having kids. I imagine I don't have kids yet, but I can imagine like that being a different kind of like style. And like, no, I, I, like, it's, it's crazy. No matter what we do, like our family would never think we're cool. Like, I mean, they, they like somebody else, you know, they like, they like some other actor or actress or band or something like that. No, I've noticed that for sure. Yeah. No, my son, he, he's uh, some, my, one of my friends posted something, some meme. And it's uh, what I know about comic books, superheroes, blah, 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 is this much. And what I know about everything else is this much. And truly, that's my son. I was like, wow, he's like a movie nut. He knows everything and everything under the sun. But I'm like, can we get you to do your schoolwork, though? <laughs> yeah, it's how all those artist types are, man. I, I think like I like I, I barely graduated high school, man. Like I, and now I just do nothing for a living, you know. It's, it's just, I mean, I think a lot of those guys are like that. But as a parent, you're gonna be like, no, man, you need like you need college, you need a job, you need all these backup plans. Like if I had a kid, it'd be different, I think. But like I can kind of see like the artistry. Like the artists are always like that, you know. They're always like, ah. I'm not going to pay attention to school. How were you in school? Were you good at school? I was. I mean, that that's the, you know, that's interesting. I, I grew up in a, a very uh, just dire straits. You know, my parents were divorced. Mom was, I mean, just, she had four kids and got married to uh, my stepdad who had just gotten out of a three year stretch in, in prison. And, you know, she immediately fell into drugs with him and shit got really bad. And, uh, but as much as I had to move around and all the different schools that I went to, I school came easy for me, thank God. And it maybe it was the one thing I escaped to, I enjoyed. So I, I graduated, you know, with, with, you know, three, seven, five GPA. That's because I, I pissed off my junior and senior year. Um, 
but uh, but it was for me. School was it was fine. Um, I I actually enjoyed it. That's crazy, man. So, how did you get into film originally? Like, uh, I was Bold and Beautiful the first thing you did, or like I saw you in a bunch of soap operas and stuff. Like, um, yeah, no, Bold and Beautiful was my first professional job, and it came really. It was really truly by accident. I wasn't I wasn't trying to pursue this massive acting dream. I was literally getting ready to go to college and. I started auditioning for a commercial agency in Los, Los Angeles, and they ended up sending me on some theatrical auditions like The Bold and the Beautiful and a couple of other things. And I auditioned for that, and then I auditioned again, and I auditioned again, and then I screen tested, and the next thing you know, I, you know, I, I got a contract with them, and it was, uh, I was barely 18. I had just turned 18. I actually, when I was screen testing, I was still 17. And I had to sign a lease on a place in Beverly Hills, uh, you know, that was not too far from the studio, a little apartment. Um, it was uh, pretty wild, right that's out of high crazy, school. That's a crazy introduction. Yeah, eighteen. I, don't, I, I would have died if I blew up at eighteen. I, I, you mean, I feel like I, I feel like it was like people are so immature at eighteen. I don't know how you handled that, man. That's crazy. Uh, well, no, I mean, you know, just like any other, you know, pitfalls of Hollywood. There's certainly a lot of pitfalls, and you know, I don't regret any of my friendships and and partying and those days it's just part it comes with the nature sort of becomes hand in hand um but um but yeah no i mean i i enjoyed it man i i tried to keep a level head but you know things happen in the industry it's just what it is you know you know there's it's all true what they say <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all shape-shifting reptilians to drink children's blood so. <laughs> <laughs> well except for that fact <laughs> No, I know. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> that's what every YouTube, every YouTube video says. If you if you have more than a hundred thousand followers, you've been in some kind of movie like that. Like you're you're in the Illuminati now. So I just I was just, I was just testing. Yeah, no, that's it's so true, man. It's so true. I, I I was I watched that like silly documentary. I don't know, man. It just there's uh it's uh, it's wild. But yeah, <laughs> do, you have, do you have a bunch of people from like Kentucky like like telling you like you're in the Illuminati and stuff? Do you ever have that happen? Like. No, I've never had anybody from Kentucky <laughs> tell me that I'm in the Illuminati, Illuminati. But you know what? I wouldn't mind uh, maybe being in. <laughs> no, it seems like it's lucrative, right? It seems lucrative. Like I don't know. It's it's no. It's just you know, no way it feels that. It's just the industry is once you get to that one percentile in, in the industry, it's very all about who you know and the connections and who you work with next, the Scorseses of the world and. So that's it, a whole nother level. And that's, it, it feels unobtainable. And those people are unattainable for the most part. Um, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, people hold it so precious to their chest. Um, that's one thing I don't much care for the, you know, that part of that politics of the industry. And that's why I decided that I was going to branch out on my, you know, my own, like a lot of actors do, especially the, the people who paved the way for indie film markets Um and I've been chasing this dream of putting indie films together, short films, this, that. And finally, um, this recent, uh, this year with our film, Four for Fun, my buddy Jason Cook, who was on Days of Our Lives when I first started in the industry. And since then, he's become an award-winning director. And um, in fact, Peter Bogdanovich, the director who just passed away recently, last week, uh, Oscar wow. award-winning director, Peter Bogdanovich, um, he directed him in his last film. So uh, when Jason came to me and said, Hey man, let's do something together. I was all for it. And I just knew he was, you know, uh, how serious he was. He was serious like me. And it takes a lot to buck buckle down. And especially in his situation, he's a writer, director, he's, he's wearing multiple different hats, editing. And, uh, you know, we managed to take this little film and now we're, we're, you know, finally seeing some results from it. So it's pretty awesome. No, when you're describing your friend as a director, I almost see your energy evolving to that. It's like, uh, like, like you started as like an actor. I could see it going that way almost. But like, uh, you, you have like, um, I don't know. You have that energy now, man. It's weird. I could see that. I could see that happen for you. Well, no, man. I, I, I've done. I've done some directing, little things, tiny little things, commercials. Um, I directed a few things. I directed a pilot that was supposed to be picked up by TLC. It was a reality-based show. Um, you know, I've just, you know, when you grow up around the cameras, you just you know, you, you see the process, you learn the process, hands-on experiences. I mean, that's, that's the best way. And I mean, I don't care what they could teach you in school techni technically, I mean, maybe for a director of photography, but all the other jobs is just, you just got to get it by living it and being on set. 
No, I agree. And like, it's a natural progression of things like, like, like you being a good actor going into being like a big director, kind of, it kind of makes sense. Like the natural progression, I think like, uh, and it was weird. Like I, I was in a movie, not nearly as big as your eyes, uh, bold and the beautiful. I, I, those numbers are insane to me when I Google it, but I was, I was in a movie like on Netflix and stuff. And like, when you see the director, like, like, and there, it seems like, Oh, that's doable. Like, it seems a lot different than when, the way I viewed it. Like, like, I don't know, eight or something. I mean, like as a child, you're like, man, these guys are just like legends and crazy. I mean, and they're still legends, but it's like, it's just weird, to, like to to be to be able to uh, BS your way into that circle. I guess you know what I mean. <laughs> like as an as an aunt, like just honestly speaking, as an adult, it's kind of weird. Like the and I, and I still do that. Like when it, like when I have guys like you were the uh, the last year, I'm like I'm like a little kid still. I'm like, I'm like this is gonna be exciting. Like, these guys have done some cool stuff. You know, it's like I still like am that entertainment nerd too. You know. Yeah. No. It's 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 a fun fun uh it's a fun place to hang out in, man. It's a it's great. So you were working. You did a little something uh, on a movie. Yeah, I worked with like the uh, I, I'm in a movie on Netflix and Amazon, but like I was uh, I, I worked with uh, the most hated film director of all time, Uwe Boll. And like that's the whole reason I went out, I worked with him is just because of that. I, I love that like kind of like villain esque thing he's got going and how he boxed his critics and stuff. I like the dude's the dude's a legend, like in a weird way. Like he's just like he's a strange legend, you know? Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, cool. I was lucky. No, I was lucky. I mean, I wouldn't do it like, like you're doing out the gate, though, bro. I mean, you're that's what I mean. Like, and those numbers, man, you, you probably had 100 million viewers in the 90s and that stuff. And they're like soap operas were so big in the 90s and still somehow produced like 30 million. I mean, that's that's bigger than like TV shows and like whatever else. I mean, that's 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 like Squid Game, like Squid Game's <laughs> numbers like every day. I mean, it's like it crazy. Was, it was crazy. Well, there wasn't many channels on, you know, I mean, especially the 80s, 90s. Um, it, you know, eventually, you know, it started tapering off. When I first started, it was. I think there was 13, 14 soap operas that were still on the air. Um, yeah. So we would, the Emmys were held at Madison Square Garden and it would fill. Um, we, uh, we also, uh, you know, we, internationally, the show, I mean, I, I flew over to Monte Carlo with them uh, a couple of times. I've been invited uh, to the World Music Awards over there to host uh, or uh, uh, announce an award. They, you know, I've gone down to South Africa with the show. Um, it's That's just, crazy. I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's a totally different realm. I mean, you literally have, you have to have security around you because if you're in a place that they know you're going to be, yeah. uh, the fans there, it's just, it's just seas of people. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. I mean, it's enough. I mean, I, I have to be honest, man. Like it, it you know, when it goes to your head when you're that young and you suddenly you're like, Whoa, I'm, I'm somebody, I'm a star, I'm this thing or whatever. And you're still not old enough to even, you know, figure out your head from your ass at that point. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, but, but it was, it was a thrill. It was a, it was a great thrill to be able to, to, to see that side of it. And, and, and you really, again, like you were talking, we were just talking about in the industry, just honing where you really feel com most comfortable. Um, if it is going into a directing spot is if it's in going to producing or, or just going, you know, working more behind the scenes. Um, I've seen everybody transition to every different position and it's, it's really great. It's, it's a rewarding career. And I recommend the career. Um, I have words that I feel about, you know, people getting into acting. I'd never want to squash anybody's dreams, but it is, I, you know, my situation happened to be very unique. It was very right timing, right, right role, right. I mean, somehow my stars had aligned and it was a very lucky opportunity was not anything like reality. You don't just, you know, show up typically and, and get, get a job. It just doesn't happen that way. And, you know, I still just like every other actor, I fight for every role um, and auditioned for slews of roles, mountains of roles and, you know, shows that everybody knows that are going to be watching that's coming out next season pilots, but you know, you don't always get everything. And unfortunately it's a, uh, it's a tough, it's a tough place right now. Um, to be completely honest, to be uh, Caucasian in the industry. Um, obviously we, we um, you know, all the different uh, ethnicities that are getting their, their due diligence and it's just long overdue. Um, but right now, I mean, because shows are just, they're cast in that way that um, it's really hard to find roles that are right for a 40 year old man like myself. Uh, so you just gotta have to be creative and you gotta keep carving your own path and, and really read everything and think, man, am I making the right decision? And is this the next move that I need to make? Um, it's a hard road. It's a hard road to be a professional actor, but um, it can be very, very rewarding. And, and I, I applaud anybody who, who decides that, that they want that as a career path. Um, 
but I think in general, the, the industry is an exciting place to work in. Yeah, no, I, I see that. And I think like, uh, I think people like don't understand how many, how much of like entertainment is just emailing people. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, like, anymore. <laughs> that's like what I feel like it mostly is at this point. It's how, how we got guys like you on the show and like other, it's just like, it's just all email and like social media. And you're like, you're like, Hey, I'm going to try to get this huge actor on here. Like, it'd be like, I don't know, man, it's just like a cool vibe. And I'm like, I mean, that perseverance is going to get everybody everywhere. And, and we're redefining the, the, the entertainment field right now too. Like, I, I don't even know why a podcast is cool. I have no idea how people take a podcast seriously, but not something else. I do. It, it makes no sense to me, but I run with it. You know, it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's so true, man. It's like, I feel like I was, I started doing a YouTube live channel, just going so, live. And, and I was, and, and I was like, well, you know, I don't really feel like recording it. Let's just go live with it. Um, and then like podcasts started getting really popular. And I was like, we're kind of going back in time. It's like, we're it's like the next, this generation is discovering radio or something. It's uh, um, but it is like that. No, it is like that. <laughs> uh, but you know, I actually find it really rewarding. I get to meet a lot of people that, I mean, a lot of them are my, my friends that I've known for years and years, but then of course there's people that I get to meet by podcasting and I enjoy it. Um, I like, I like asking questions. I like being that person and finding out some interesting stories that maybe people might not know. I try to really, calculate my questions a little bit so I can get just the, you know, find, find the, the, the skinny on some situations. Um, I, I like, uh, I, I enjoy it. I think podcasting is great. Yeah. Somehow I don't, I, like I said, I fully don't, I don't really understand how sitting on my couch does better than like some movies I, I, I put out on Amazon, you know, <laughs> like it like, literally makes no sense. Like I always like, it's weird. It's weird. If you do a bunch of things, like, do you find this too when you're acting? Like, like if you do a bunch of things, there's like this group of people that know you from this and this group of people that know you from this and this group of people that never heard anything you did and like, blah, there's like, just like a bunch of different groups of people basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it course. seems like to me. That's what it seems like. It is. It is. Um, it's an interesting world, but, uh, but I appreciate it again, man. Um, so, uh, so how long have you been doing the show? Well, successfully about a year, but I've been about five years unsuccessfully. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it takes time, man. I, and, and that was one thing with like, when I started with this, I wanted to make sure that I did it every single Wednesday. I haven't missed a Wednesday. You do Wednesdays too? Yes. Do you, do you go live on Wednesdays? Every not, well, not live, but I try to record mostly on Wednesday. Like I'm, I'm about, if it was, if it was more than me, I'd go, I'm too dumb to produce my own stuff. So I have to do like the zoom thing we're doing. And like, I have a good setup of camera and stuff, but like, I'm too dumb to like go live, talk, have good guests, sell ads. Like I'm just like, I'm only one dude, you know, it's like, it's a lot of work, dude. It is a lot of work. Do you produce your yeah. own show or do you have a producer? Or what? No. Yeah. I, I produce it. I write That's it. Nuts. I, I, I reach out to the talent, you know, a little bit of everything I do. Um, the only thing that I don't do is editing. I'll send it off a file to my producer, which is at empire Podnet. Yeah. So, and that's the worst part. That's editing is the worst part. But it, like everything else is fun. Like meeting these people in movies. I saw, like like yourself. Like you're a huge actor to me. Like, like you've been in some cool stuff, man. Like this is like uh, I would I would imagine like the like and then I had like the guy who played Michael Myers before you. I'd imagine these people are saying yes now. It's weird to me. You know, it's like it's just like it's just a weird vibe. And I'm I'm blessed with this moment. You know, it's like and I think like you probably feel that way in film and, and work and stuff too. It's like just sometimes you're up, sometimes you're not. You know, and like right now I'm up. You know. Yeah. No. no absolutely. Obviously, you're doing something right, man. And just keep up the good work. It's it it shows. <laughs> that was on your intro i was like i think you're i think you're the most like not in a weird way but the most attractive person i've had on my show so far <laughs> at, least I'm, at least i made it someplace so i'm like this is <laughs> this guy makes me look like a four i said my intro i'm like i'm like i turn this on i'm like i'm like you're like a i'm like jesus man like like <laughs> i think it's funny to say that but no uh no it's, i think that's a lot of acting stuff like to where like a guy like me i have to, I have to rely on like other things like it's like you, like you know i have to like be weird or something i can't just like you know what i mean like if i was like you know what I mean? And you have, you, you have both probably too, though. You have to do directing stuff and all that stuff too. Well, you know, I mean, you know, my career is a little bit, it's different, you know, I just, um, you know, I, I, the podcast is one, one piece of me. Um, one piece that I've tr been trying to find so deeply to, to help out other people. Um, and so we delve into a little bit of mental health, but we also delve into like, what's, what's going on with my guests. But, um, but we're helping ultimately Boys Town, which is, is in Omaha, Nebraska. It's been around for over 100 years, um, saving kids. And, you know, so, so that's, uh, I, I, I've been working with Boys Town for several years now, and I really wanted a way to find a bigger voice for them. Um, they were madly popular charity to donate to, and they were able to help a lot more kids um, 
you know, many, many years ago and all through the seventies, even in the eighties and nineties, like Michael Jordan would come by Boys Town. people, you know, people, you know, big sports figures. And then, you know, they've sort of like forgotten the next, this generation has forgotten exactly what, what it all represented. I mean, it even spurred an Oscar award winning film. They've uh, they're just, you know, father Flanagan who created Boys Town was a genius and he was able to raise money where other people couldn't. Um, and so they just, you know, they, I, I just want to help them get back on the map and, and, and continue doing what they're doing. And it can't be done without anybody else because they're hundred percent nonprofit. So, um, do you think your so, personal yeah. experience is like a job? Like, why do you hear to like, you can help people that like went through the similar stuff you did as a kid, maybe and that's too ridiculous of a question. You can ignore No, it. it's not ridiculous. Actually, that's exactly yeah. why I'm doing I was it. wondering, I was wondering that, like when you said that it vibed like, uh, and I, I mean, that's, we're all just trying to save the world through our own experience. You know, I think that's like very important that you're even like, like caring about that. Like, like you're a guy that probably doesn't have to, you know, I, I, like a lot of these guys, like, I mean, I can, like, I don't know. I can sit on my couch all day too. You know, it's like, but, but like, you know what I mean? Like, but it's cool seeing like people make an active change and go for it. I think that's, definitely what the world needs and it's definitely the silver lining in this period right now when everyone's like all fear-based and crazy or whatever else, you know, I think like it, it's, it just takes several people like you just kind of building on that, you know, and like saving people from what you're experiencing, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think at some point, I think really the changing point for me was, you know, having becoming a father. I'm a father three times, three kids, a teenager and two younger daughters who are in elementary school. Oh, wow. And you know, I think you just start, you start realizing what's important in your life. And, and it's not, it's not always about what you get out of, I mean, you know, what I get out of life is, is huge because if I can help somebody and they're able to achieve their dreams when they might not have been able to do, or at least pursue something that is simple as getting a degree in mechanics or, um, you know, getting a degree as a nurse, which, you know, they, they do this for, you know, these kids, if, you know, if they have no aspirations of going to college, they, they don't leave boys town without a vocational skill. And, um, you know, they just, they set these kids up and they do it right. I mean, Ford motor company donates all the lifts, all of the oh, wow. engines that they work on. I mean, the, this vocational school that, you know, that I went to there on campus, I flew out there to visit. Um, it's like second to none, second to none. Like, you know, these kids are getting a proper education. At least they have something to take with them that they can start their lives with. They may move in a different direction, but at least they're ready to face the world where they, you know, in the situations that they were in or are behind them and they're moving forward. Yeah. It's like a networking experience. Plus like giving you a trade that you can fall back on. If like, uh, if like whatever, whatever else you have a backup plan, at least at this point, you know, or a plan, depending on how, like whatever you want to do with your life. You know, I like that, man. And I think, I, I think parents need to do that probably. I mean, I like just also, I like, just need to like, put like, like kind of, you know, but kids aren't going to listen. Kids aren't going to listen to kids. Like their parents probably in that regard. No, no, it's, it's the, it's an uphill battle with my son. Everything is, you know, it's, um, you know, when, once they hit a certain age, you know, your parents don't know anything. <laughs> oh, I've been 16 before. Yeah, no, I remember. I remember being like 16. Like I was just like, oh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do all this crazy stuff and blah blah blah. Just being disrespectful. And then you come, I'm like 35 and I come back around. They're like my friends now, you know. Like to where like uh, I mean they're still there for me. I need it, but I mean, but I'm just saying like they're like like when I'm older, it's like I hit up my mom to talk for half an hour. Now I never did that as a kid, you know. Yeah, well, that's part. You know, that's that's when you come back around. You find that you find that joy. Just those simple moments in your life where, you know you know, you, you miss those moments with your, your parents and you want to interact with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Things change as you get older. It's interesting. It <laughs> is. The whole, the whole ride's fun, man. No, I, and I like, uh, I like the growing into things more so and like, like not just being so surface. Like, like when I was, I don't know, when I was like in my twenties, I was so surface, you know, I was just like, I just felt like, and I think I, I, I like the whole, like growing older thing. It's, it's fun, you know? Yeah. Your thirties, you learn so much, man. It's a, it's a good time that you're in right now. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah. I mean, it probably will be the whole ride. I mean, I'll make my nineties fun too. If I, if I, somehow I'm allowed that much time, you know, I just, <laughs> I just feel like the whole thing is what you make it, you know? Absolutely. hundred percent. Right. Brother. Do you write music or anything else? Or you dabble in any other kind of art? Yeah. Or you, I had a feeling. Yeah. Hey, it's me, your favorite comedian, Anthony Rogers. Um, I'd like to tell you to get some, uh, exhale Delta eight, hemp gummies right now um i meant to do this review last week but i've been eating too many edibles uh, but so go ahead and uh get these link in the description 25 milligram eat one or two um i've been eating them for about three weeks they're pretty good go get them right now yeah no i've i've, I've been releasing music off and on since uh, the 90s or early to no 2000 what genre uh, do you do 
Well, so, you know, when I, when I, I was signed to a record label, Artemis Records, when I was, um, I was, gosh, I was 19. That's um, crazy. And they're, they're out of New York. They were responsible. Danny Goldberg and Daniel Glass, who owned the company, that was a major record. They merged and, um, you know, Danny Goldberg was, he did like 311, the Eagles. Nirvana too, right? Did he do Nirvana? I don't think he did Nirvana. Goldberg. Okay, maybe not yet. Um, but there was, uh, but just a slew of, slew of the 90s hits and 2000s and all that stuff in, in big band. Um, and they I'd signed be dead if I had your life. Like if I had your life, I'd be dead. Like this, like, <laughs> like acting in major, like, like TV show at 18, record deal at 19, I would be dead. You know, I, I, I'm too dumb for that. Well, uh, you know, I had a good team that was supporting me at that time. So, and that's really everything when you're Makes sense. making moves in, in Hollywood, you, you need to have people that are around you that are, you know, some are money driven, but some ideas that are money driven are good ideas. Some just suck, you know, they're just, you know, they're terrible and they will be a, a career killer. So it's really important that any, you know, kids and, and anybody who's got any kind of ambitions really are clear about what they want to get out of the industry. Otherwise, you know, they're going to walk all over you. And something I teach any, yeah. any young actor I've worked with is biz the business aspect of Hollywood. You, that, learn that first. <laughs> learn the business. Yeah, I get, uh, I, well, like the first, the, when I was in uh, the Uber Bowl film, like my buddy right before I went to Canada for it was like, he's like, can you act? I'm like, I'm like, for money, I can. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's like, it, was like, it was like one of those things that wasn't like my focus or anything like that. But it was like just a cool thing. Like, uh, like spamming people got me, you know. And I, and I was just kind of like, I feel like art, like you, if you're good at like art, you kind of bullshit art, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, you got to fake it till you make it. A hundred percent. No, I think that hundred percent. He was like trying to get on. He's like, he's like, have you ever acted before? Did anything? I'm like, I'm like, no, but I'm a, I'm a bullshitter. You know, I could probably fake it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never acted before. Fuck yeah, man. I'm acting every day. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Did you have to go to school for that? Or was that kind of like your thing too? Like you just went straight into like a role of like, like, okay, like read this line, say these lines, like, uh, no, I mean, I, so as soon as I, so I, I did study when I was in high school, right? I did musicals. I was in choir. I was in concert choir and, okay, and I see that choir, but I was also an athlete. So like, you know, a lot of guys were like, what are you doing in musicals? Um, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't I, say that now probably. Right. No, no, no <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I mean. You're like, you're like, Oh, pay it off, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact, there's a, a story when I was, when I was in high school, I was in the, 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 every day I'd come in and change the boys locker room and I kept getting a water balloon thrown at me every single time I'd put my pants on. And it was like, it was like a week of this shit. And I finally turned around and I was like, who, who the hell threw that? And uh, this guy who was on my wrestling team, who was one of the team captains, he was also like a big deal on the football team. Uh, fucking just grabbed me and started smashing my head to the ground. And that's when I realized that life is really, really cold and it's not about you. It's about somebody else. And, um, you know, jealousy is a, is a hell of a beast, man. And, and, um, and so, and I think it had, they thought, you know, he also probably, cause I was in, in musicals and choir and stuff like that, that maybe, you know, small town shit. It's so, probably his own uh, insecurity. No, it's probably his own insecurity. But, like, later, I, but later on, he ended up apologizing to me and I didn't ask him for his apology. I mean, this was like years later. He was like, dude, what I did to you was wrong. And I said, well, I'm glad that you see that. And, and thank you for saying I'm sorry, right? No, it probably means what? a lot. No, yeah, I see that a lot too. I mean, I, I was a mean kid too. So I, I kind of got that. Like I was kind of like, a, but now I could see it. Um, that's good though. People come full circle and realize the things they did are ridiculous, you know? Yeah, that's probably insecurity. That's probably all insecurity, man. The dude, if he was like killing it in sports, he probably saw a dude killing it too. And he's like, oh man, I'm, I'm the best, you know? And like, and like people need to separate that and kind of realize there's like room for everybody at the top. You know, I think that's like a, that's the thing I realized like definitely way after high school. But, but I think like, <laughs> but I think like, uh, I don't know. I used to compete with everybody. I felt like, like if I, I don't know, I'd feel like if I was just doing a podcast, I feel competitive rather than collaborative. Like now I feel collaborative. I don't know. It's weird how time changes us. <laughs> It's, you know, it, it's, it's good. I like collaborating too. I, I've had a lot of other people that have um, interviewed me from their podcasts. And I do like, to, I like the community of people that are, that are gung ho about it and that actually enjoy doing it. I, I see some people that do it like actor friends of mine, they'll do one every two months. Right. Yeah. But then I'm like, are you really enjoying it? Or are you just doing it? I don't know. I'm a guy that has to commit to something. And if I commit to it, it's, yeah. it's consistency. 
Oh, Sam. Yeah. I have to, and I have to, I have a problem like spreading out too thin or, or too wide where I like, I'll like start like an online newspaper and all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh man, I can only run like one thing. So I, I gave up a lot of that stuff just to just have a podcast going. I, I started monetizing when my mom got sick and like, I was just like freaking out. So I just like, like, uh, it made me, it forced me into it. Cause before I do other things, I just like sell merch online or like, you know, just do different, you know, I mean, like do comedy shows or whatever. And then like, I, I felt like I had like other people were dependent on me other than myself for once. So I had to like figure, you know, I mean, and I, like, I don't know, it's probably the same thing with kids or something. I don't know. No, it was, that was a motivator, right? To help out mom. Well, yeah, it, it just like, she had a really bad, they thought she had ALS or something like crazy. And then it, it ended up, ended up being like still terrible, but like, it was like her spine staircasing, but I mean, she's doing better now, but like during that time, I mean, you just freak out. I moved, I moved back to the suburbs for a second. You know, I was like, I was like doing all that. Uh, like I hate this, in this town I hate just to hate, just to help my mom. And I was like, but it was all worth it clearly. But I'm saying like, there's the uh, definitive complaints, <laughs> like being, being in this like, t- like town with 10,000 people, like a railroad or something, man. I don't know. And, and choose your own, whatever, whatever people live, you know? I think that was the main thing. I probably would keep doing this without it. I wouldn't even sell ads probably if I, I don't care about that. I don't care about money as much, you know, as much as I do personal freedom, you know? Right. Word. I, I get it. That's why I was wondering. Yeah. That's why I was like more or less bringing that up. Cause I think actors said the same kind of thing. Like, uh, like to where it's just like, it's like, yeah, art's fun. And like, it's cool. I have notoriety, but like the freedom's probably the best part. There's no like real perks to fame anymore other than like getting laid and then I'm married. So it doesn't matter. That's what I mean. There's no real, like, like, like oh, and, and I, he, yeah. And even that's in question these days, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, everybody's in the B two movement now. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's that's gotta be crazy. Like, gotta I, be real careful. <laughs> that was the only perk of fame. Like, I mean, that was like literally the only perk. I mean, other than going into meetings and people like, look, like it's easier for meetings and business, I guess. The more your name gets out there, but it's like, I mean, there's no real perks to it. I mean, the sixteen, like, like if I was like sixteen looking at this, I wouldn't under, I wouldn't, I don't know. It's weird how it's, yeah, you know, what I mean, it's just weird. It's not what I thought it was as a kid, you know. But it's not bad. It's just not what I thought it was as a kid. Yeah, what's well, a dream when you're a kid? Yeah, exactly. It was like unobtainable. Like even that. Like, like if I told myself, even like, like I think Girl Next Door came out in two thousand four. If I told myself in two thousand four you're gonna be on a podcast, I'd be like, first, be like, what's a podcast? But also, I'd be like, like that's probably huge. I mean, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Like how the world works, man. It's like, it's like crazy. Just like how this like we're all. You put you put things out there, man, and and if you want it, it it some it somehow if you manifest, I, I I truly believe in manifestation. If there's something you want bad enough, you can absolutely get it. And maybe it's mind over matter. Maybe it's just a, just a pure will of wanting it. But it does happen. It does. Um, it's crazy. Like, like for instance, back here on my wall, I've got uh, this the stage uh, set list from one of my favorite country artists, Cody Jinx. Oh, and I love Cody Jinx, bro. I love country. <laughs> Cody did my podcast. He jumped on. Um, That's huge. That's that dude's huge. And I, I had been listening to him for four or five years. And like, it was that if you were in my truck, that was what was on repeat. And, and so I, I finally, was just like, you know, I reached out and he got back to me and he had his podcast and he was, you know, during the COVID lockdown specifically, she still does a few in with Cody. I mean, he gets like a million downloads a month. So, you so know, I, I was, uh, I was bowled over by the fact that he agreed to do mine. You know, even I, you know, I have fans and, or, I mean, I'm a fan of multiple people that I, I love and uh, you know, I, I, he doesn't know me from anybody. So why would he do my podcast? But he, uh, he did. And, and, uh, and I, and so then I went to his show and the first thing he did was give me a hug. That's pretty crazy. awesome. That's crazy, man. No, I love country. I like country gospel a lot too. That's like probably my favorite genre right now. I just love like like country gospel is probably my favorite. But I like, I like these outlaw guys. I like I like I, I mean country is new to me because like as a kid I, it was so stigmatized. Like I you couldn't like tell in my town you couldn't like tell people listen to rap and country. So I was like I was like I was like kind of like naive of it or listen to it and didn't tell people. Now I'm like kind of diving down into it and like listening to all this stuff. And it's this different subculture than rock, you know, that I was uh, accustomed to. So it was like I really like the country like kind of music and like especially. Like the way we are now, I mean, the times are going. I mean, it's, I don't want to be in a city or a suburb half the time. I'd rather be in the country, you know, and like, yeah. and not, not that there's anything wrong. I mean, I have better restaurants out here, like, like in the city, but like, I think that, like, I mean, by, by, by Thursday, I'm trying to get to the country, you know? Yeah. No, I don't blame you, man. It's, uh, and, you know, I, I grew up on country music and I write that's country music. And I thought that when I asked you that, I, I thought you were a country musician. That's why, that's why I, it was weird. I, I didn't even read that when I did homework or anything like that, but I, I like had a feeling that you one wrote music and two is country. That's funny. I, I can kind of vibe that. Yeah, man. Well, good intuition, man. Uh, but I've, I've, I find country music incredibly rewarding. I mean, I listen to every genre, right. But, um, you know, especially delving into the old stuff and, and, you know, just listening to like, whether it's like, uh, Waylon Jennings doing a little chicken picking or, or just, just really digging in deep. And I just, I love, I, I mean, I, I love that sound and, and that I've always been uh, just drawn to it. 
you know, it's, it's, you know, it makes me, it just fills my heart when I listen to country music. No, it makes sense. It's, yeah, it's good. It's good words too. That's why I like the gospel country too. Like, I like, have like Alan Jack, like old, like nineties Alan Jackson doing like, what a friend we have in Jesus or something. Like, just like certain ones are just like you like feel your like soul like happy that you're like hearing the gospel almost. And like, and then basic country has values. I mean, it's like it's like as I get older, more I'm into that. You know, I, I was kind of rebellious as a kid and like didn't like look more into rap and stuff. Now I'm like, man, I still have the values and I like being a good person, like good people. You know, it's like as I grow, I don't know. This free? Are you still there? Still there? Um, we're back. Okay, yeah, I'll cut that. I'll put up a commercial in between that. We can start again, right? Just whatever. Yeah, no, but country music, man, is uh, it's 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 my life, man. I, there's a country song to to everything, um, and uh, just the way when I write music, it just naturally came out as country music from very early on, um, and so I stopped fighting it about. Oh gosh, probably six years ago. And I was just, I'd write all these songs to my wife and whatever my inspiration was while we were living in Utah. And she said, you know, why don't you stop singing songs for me and go start writing them for yourself in Nashville? And so I said, really? And she said, yeah. So, you know, I, I called up some of my country friends, guys that play with Darius Rucker, guys that play with, I mean, you, you name it, Tim McGraw, and these these guys are also not only on tour with them, but they're also like studio musicians, the top in the, the business. So, um, you know, those guys really helped me out, you know, and pointed me in the right direction with my songs. And I was able to get the proper players on them and and really lay them down. So I was really proud of that. I wasn't it wasn't for fame. It was for, um, you know, or, or, or just even the success of selling anything. It was just really about me coming to terms with. Um, when I was younger, when I was signed under that record label, um, I gave up on music because I had wrote this album and I was already busy, right? I was working in TV, but I wrote this album and I went on a full pre-release tour across the country, performed acoustically. Um, I mean, everywhere from Texas to, you know, Rhode Island, everywhere. And the album came out on 9-11 on the, that Tuesday oh, wow. and, and, and they had like life cut size cutouts. And I was like, all that hard work is going to pay off. It was in every warehouse music store across the country. And um, it was going to be a nice way to get into the music industry. And uh, that all changed. And, and so it was, it was a long time before I really started even coming to terms with that dream being dashed. Cause I was like, it was like starting all over because the record label had already spent at that point, like $780,000 on touring. And I mean, they, they were, they were already in deep and that's what this is. That's what a lot of, that's why things have changed too. You know, these, these record labels, they front the money, right? That's yeah. why. I just lost, and, yeah. and then you end up, and then you're, if you're a band, God forbid you're five guys and you're touring the country. Yeah. Yeah. I always think about that you're paying back the record label for your last album and you're probably going to be broken up by the time you're finished with the tour. I mean, no, so you're right. Uh, I try to do music. And I, I had similar experiences. Like, like the other guys weren't as serious about it. And like, uh, you just put the money so many ways. Like that's why I went to comedy almost. It's like, it was easier. And like, <laughs> like it was just easier. You're just like talking to a microphone. You don't have to like write anything. I mean, I'll write stuff, but I mean, I don't use it, you know, but like, we yeah. just go up there and like BS and like whatever, like, like, like a podcast. I mean, but yeah, no, I can see that. I kind of relate a lot to that. And like the world did definitely change that day. I mean, like, well, that was a, that was a pivotal moment of like what I like to call the decline of the West. I mean, like, like since then, I hope we get it back finally. Like, but, but it's kind of like, irritating to see the decline, you know, like I says like, yeah, no, it, it was so, and so true. And, you know, of course I had to just like, that's why I walked away. I was like, well, there's gotta be a sign. This was like God, God's way of saying, you know later. there's no such thing as coincidences and yeah, it's, it's probably got to do it later man and like and like a lot of guys didn't have the didn't have the show to back them like, like they, they would they would they would do nothing they have no money like, like, like that would be their only deal and these record labels would give them like a high interest loan of a hundred thousand dollars or something like, like <laughs> you know what i mean like a 30 percent interest rate or something crazy and like and like you know what i mean just like yo they eat them alive man i watched those soundcloud rappers in 2016 like uh I got all those like little Zans, little pumps, all those guys. Warner Brothers got them for like four million or something crazy. Like Capital got them, and then like they were going platinum, and they swoop these guys up and make them slaves. I mean, really, it's it's just sad, yeah. man. It's it sad, sad how messed up the industry, like the music industry specifically, is. Like, 
That's why you got to own your own publishing. You got to have your own recording facility or studio. I mean, you yeah. really got to, you got to take control. That's why Cody Jinx, you know, I'm like such a fan of his because he did it all himself. He's not signed under, he's got his own label. He's always had his own label. Um, That's and, the new artistry. The it is. It is. That's, you have to take control of your art. Yeah. You got to be a manager, um, producer, like, I, I mean, like talent, uh, you know, for booking agent. I mean, whatever, merch guy, you know, you got to yeah, be like, oh, you gotta be everything now, which is, I mean, it, it cuts out all the middlemen. It's probably easier to be famous now. It's harder to monetize. Like, like it's, it's probably, you could spam your way to fame in no time, but, but you know what I mean, but like the, getting the paid is like hard or almost. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. Like, you know, I'll talk to like all these different artists, especially, especially country artists. I go, I'm so fortunate. I get to go backstage with a lot of these guys and meet that's them. And stuff. So I was backstage with Brent Cobb and, um, and talk, talking to a few other guys, but you know, it, it's really like the first thing they'll tell you is it's a business first. You know, yeah, you see the art out there and you see me doing my thing, but don't get me wrong. I'm in it for the money. Well, at least you're honest about it. A lot of guys try to lie about it. Like, like Kirk Cobain tried to be like, oh, I don't even care about the money or fame, even though I worked towards this for 10 years while being broke. You know, <laughs> it's just like, yeah. I, like no one accidentally ends up somewhere, you know, it's like, and, and like, well, that's, it's fine. To, it's fine to want the money in art too. It's, it's fine. I think it's fine. And that should be more acceptable. It's like, it's not only about the money, but it's, it, I mean, you're not going to do stuff for free. I mean, it's a waste of time. Have you seen the prices at the grocery store? Come on. <laughs> I, I mean, it, is about the, it is about the money. If you get you get a family and you're feeding kids, it's about the money. You got to make the bread, baby. You got to bring it home, and um, and that's just life. You know, you can you can be a van person and follow your heart's content into the sunset and live in a diesel and and do that. You know, and I get more power to you. I could do something like that maybe a day and a half. You know, two days, three days, go on a week's vacation, whatever, with my wife. But you know, I need. I'm hungry for you know, for the business interests that I want in life for my future, for my kids' future. And I, I, I just, I, I, you know, I don't, I can't get the subculture of kids or anybody not wanting to work. I get it. Work sucks. It does. I mean, I started working at the age of, I was my first job. I was 14. I was pumping gas. We lived in Oregon and that's one of the only States where you can, you know, you can't pump your own gas. I remember that. Yeah. I drove through there. So I, so I, you know, we have these tourists come in. We lived in the coast in Oregon and we have these tourists come in and I had my little Texaco jacket and I'd, you know, go over there and pump their gas for them, fill up these RVs, wash their windshields, check their oil if they needed it, like full service. And they would tip me, man. I worked my ass off. The, the guy who owned the gas station for years and years and years, he goes, what's that in your pocket? And I said, it's uh, tips from today. It was my first day. He goes, I've never gotten a tip in my life. Huh. And I've owned he couldn't believe it and it was every weekend like that for me it's your relatability too it's like it's like uh you, i can tell you, you you seem like a guy you can put in most situations and thrive like i like uh like uh socially like a social darwinist you seem like a social darwinist almost like well i do th i do thrive i mean you know, my producing partner uh jason cook who i was mentioning earlier who directed the movie four for fun he's uh he's an actor so you know he is a I guess he's more of an introvert anyway, in general, but he's not very good. Like I'm the other half of, of him. His creativity or arts is one thing, but when we go into a meeting, it's gotta be me to put the shine on because he's, he's too within himself to discuss his own wonderful projects. Yeah. And you have to be relatable and understand how to communicate your ideas. And I, that, I think that's huge in America. I mean, I think like uh, that, that's the biggest thing I think for like CEOs or whatever artists, whatever is that you can communicate your idea. Like, I mean, a guy like Tesla probably had better ideas, but he just got ripped off by businessmen. You know, it's just like not to be rude, but I mean, that, that was, that was their bad at ethics or whatever. But I, but I think like, that's kind of what it's like. It's like, you almost need that collab, like the Wozniak and jobs or whatever, you know, like, like that, you almost need that, like, like, yeah. kind of, like kind of like dynamic and like, uh, well, uh, uh, you were telling me before we were recording too, you were in a movie with Stone Cold coming out soon? Yeah, so this is a, a film. It's a, it's a football film called The Walk-Ons and takes place uh, in a small town in Florida. And these guys grew up together and they've even, some of them are working together at the same plant, it's comedy, and they get laid off, but they, they all go to their son's football games every year together and, you know, yell from the stands and they're a rowdy crew. Um and their kids have had just horrible football seasons and it's their last year. And they're just, they're like, well, we're laid off. Let's get this brainiac idea to like, you know, help them out and go to the athletic director and the coach. And so they start training with them and help them out. And it's uh, so it's Goldberg, Jericho, uh, Chris Jericho, 
uh, myself. They're in talks with Vince Vaughn right now. So I don't know if there's anything going to come of that, but um, that's some insider stuff, but, uh, but there's uh it's going to be a good film. It's uh, um, I don't know where the distribution is going to end up, but it's a, uh, it's a fair budget. It's $6 million budget. That's rad, man. Congrats on your success, dude. Like, uh, I think any part of that sentence you just told me would be like a childhood dream of mine. Like, like Stone Cold, Goldberg, Jericho. I mean, Vince Vaughn pulls that too. I mean, like that's that's great company to be in, man. I think I was a huge wrestling fan as I was younger. I mean, I still, I watch it sometimes, I guess. But like, I was way more into the Attitude Era and all that stuff, man. And I think that like uh, that's just rad company to be in, man. Like, uh, it sounds like a cool movie. I'll probably check that out. Like, yeah, it, yeah it's going to be a trip for sure for me too. You know, I watched all those, you know, especially back in my high school days, I would watch a lot of wrestling. This one was good. I mean, the attitude was good, man. You had like DX and yeah. Undertaker, Stone Cold, all that stuff. Like it got, it got cheesy now. Like, like they have a great budgets, but the writing's bad almost. I feel like. I think there was more on the line back then. It felt like there was more on the line. Now it just feels too polished. That's a good point too. Yeah, they're already rich, like filling up. Yeah, there's no struggle. He had to unite the federations back then. Like he, he, uh, Vince was the guy that united all those wrestling federations. So, so then once he had it, you have no competition. And I mean, you had WCW, I guess, at the time, which <laughs> kept him competitive. And then he bought that, didn't he? Didn't he buy WCW? You know, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I knew he was. He, he took control of a lot of them. That's nuts. Yeah, he put it was before him. Like uh, it was all these weird, like like Tennessee and like whatever wrestling federations. Like like you had this weird. Yeah, yeah, there was, man. No, go ahead, brother. Sorry. Uh, no, you go ahead, man. Well, I was going to say, I'll just say, I'll end up talking to you for nine more hours. We should throw some promo out there where people can find you and stuff. Uh, and it's weird asking, like like I said, it's weird asking huge actors that, but like, is, uh, is there places you want people to follow you or whatever, like um, that are watching or listening? Yeah, I mean, you know, the main place obviously is Instagram, which is Jacob. Just type in Jacob Young and it's the check, the one with the check by it. Um, it's too complicated because other Jacob Youngs were taken. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so just type in Jacob Young, same thing for Twitter. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm around, man. I'm around on social media, hit me up. And, um, you know, I do answer DMs from time to time. If, you know, somebody has a question that's valid, I will, uh, I will answer. So um, I'm not that far away. Thanks for watching the show. Go to DeltaExtracts.com. Get some rechargeable sticks. To get some edibles. Other pop rocks they sent me. Those are probably my favorite. Those are crazy. Um, go to the website. Check it out for yourself. Get it now.